What's up guys, this is Void of Dust Gaming, your channel for fresh Arena of Valor content and today I'm featuring McGunga because I haven't played him in quite a while, that's the first thing and he's always a fun character to play with this Venom effect because you can kill enemies while they try to get away on their journey back home and you will send them immediately back home to the respawn point which is even better because usually after you have dealt with them they would have need needed to go and re back to the respawn point anyways because of that venom so i want to show you my build first i think that is the stuff that we do here on the channel at first and as you can see um this is pretty much a standard component build we've got the gilded greaves we've got barry's agony we've got the tome of the reaper we've got the diadem in some wild order um basically i would do something like this so this is the build. It's mainly focused on getting as much power out there as possible while having two more of kind of defensive items here with Varus Agony giving you some armor and Frostguard giving you some armor as well as the Ice Blast Shockwave thing. So that's the stuff. Item-wise, Arcana-wise, I'm going with my pure and joyful mage build. Um, focusing on mainly damage with 90 ability power, some magic pierce, some magic lifesteal and cooldown speed. That comes from 10 times violate, that comes from 10 times devour and that comes from 10 times hex. So if you want to rebuild it, these are the arcana that you need for this. Um, enchantment wise, I have chosen to go with basically full damage or most of the items or the enchantments are based on damage. We've got the Holy Thunder, we've got here the Holy Verdict and we've got the Deadly Claw to increase our damage. And then in the first row, we've got Mana Refill and Devour to sustain a little bit more and get some mana back if we use abilities or if we do get kills or assists in the game. So I think it's pretty pretty standard, nothing too fancy about it, nothing that should surprise you, but I hope that the game is going to surprise you and this is the stuff that we're going to watch now. Be prepared. And here we are and what I listened to was some new music when the game starts. That was actually quite surprising. Um, at first I had the feeling that there was some audio file being played because my, I don't know, my amp went on or my media player. So pretty, pretty strange, um, but I guess I recovered from it a couple of seconds later. So this is a casual match. I'm in the solo queue and I'm fighting against Ignis. We've got some mirror matches going on because we've got both a Valheim on each side. And we've got two Taras, but our Tara is playing on the top lane and their Tara is playing the support role. So this is the main difference, but basically two of the positions have been mirrored. Um, we've got Ryoma versus Tara on the top lane. I'm fighting against Ignis, as I already said. And then we've got Murat versus Xanis in the jungler role and the support on our side is Guildway if you haven't seen it. So this is the team composition. I would say I'm pretty fine with it. Like Murad isn't the strongest jungler. Uh, Zenith is a auto button win hero. So I think they have the upper hand here, but then I would rate Gildor to be um, a little bit stronger and especially more convenient in team fights because of his ult and the second ability, this kind of gold throw thing. I don't know, he throws something, uh, slowing and causing massive damage at the first levels. So this is the stronger pick. Um, I'm not really too fond of Ignis, but of course he has the ability to burst his shots through the minions. So he's got the range advantage against me. And um, yeah, top lane Tara versus Ryoma is basically completely open. It mainly depends on how good each character is. I've seen Taras who went 13-0, uh, and I've seen Taras who went 0-13, so depends. Of course, Ryoma's got the range advantage, and he can stun Tara all the time, but she should have better sustain, and she should be able to withstand all of his blows sitting under the tower, just getting minor damage, so... Just from the matchup, I didn't see that we would have a disadvantage. Uh, on the opposite, it would be some kind of skill-based stuff or basically um, how well the team 
strategy or the team tactics will work out in the end. So that was what I was thinking when I was when I was playing the game. So if we do get the first the first kill here for our team in uh, in assistance to our Murad, unfortunately that guy is being killed. I know not not, not that guy, but Valhan is is being killed on the move. Now the enemy is in our jungle, and we need to be super careful because there is. And Ignis, I do get the shutdown here, which is actually quite nice. So we do get a little bit of gold. And of course, we are not the one looking stupid because we didn't do anything at all. And now we're fighting back and forth. Now Ryoma should be dead, and he is. And uh, I mean, he can jump out with pinwheel, but the double kill feels really nice. And we completely turned the disadvantage from one th versus three of 1v3 into a 4v3 right now. So good stuff here. I've got one assist, I've got one kill, and I'm the gold lead right now. Um, our Valheim is a little bit fed, but on the opposing side, look at Xanus' score. He's got three kills versus the uh, Murad here with just one kill. So that's not a good start, um, just from a like individual hero's perspective because of course if Xanus starts to snowball things are actually looking pretty gritty that's not something that you want to have straight in your face as you can see he's already level 7 so his farming advantage shows and now he's back in our jungle so what they did really really well um, they completely turned our jungle into theirs and now We've got Rioma in here. Rioma is killed. So that was that's the beauty of the Venom. If they've got the stacks on them and they're low on health and they've got five stacks, they will die whenever they leave the fight. Unfortunately, as you can see on the minimap, we've got a we've got a Valhan here starting to damage our tower. Like no one cares about him. Everyone is just running around like, like crazy. Like what is our Valhan doing up there? Okay, they switched sides, so now Tara is there. But... I'd say Tara has a disadvantage against Valheim. And Valheim seems to have a disadvantage against the opposing Ryoma and the opposing R Ryoma. Uh, Ryoma and Ryoma, yeah, nice. Ryoma and Xanus, that's what I want to say. Of course, Z our... Valheim is a lot weaker because he's a lot squishier than a bulky Tara sitting in fat armor. So that's not a good thing. Uh, Ignis should be dead. Yes, there we go. Uh, Tara isn't dead, unfortunately. Oh, it's it wasn't Ignis. I, I'm messing up the stuff completely. I killed someone. I don't care. It's a kill and that's good. So because of the because of the st strong stuff that they have in terms of getting life back from uh, both the true damage from Xanus, what he does with the Omni weapon shit. Oh no, it doesn't have lifelink anymore. Well, I thought that it would be interesting to get life regeneration stoppers. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I wanted to build. Uh, turn with the Reaper first. That was that was my idea. I don't know what happened here, but <sighs> I saw it's kind of late. It's already it's it's almost eleven. Um, what happened here in this scene was that Valheim completely took the advantage out of all that team fight happening in the middle lane, focusing on one lane and just pushing through. As you can see, he is going towards the lane again, and no one's stopping him. I'm like, look guys, this is my lane, I just wanted to help out, and now I see that there's a threat. And I see that people are roaming down, so I was like, okay, well, that could be enough. That should be enough, that's that's the other thing. It should be enough that one person is dealing with Valheim, but unfortunately Tara goes in, and Tara, Ryoma, and Valheim are fighting against her. Murad hasn't got anything against them, but now... I am going in and I'm there. Three stacks already, but unfortunately Tara is in her ultimate state, so I can't kill her with my abilities and my passive. Unfortunate. But of course Tom of the Reaper is AIDS against her. It's like, well, you don't really have an ult anymore. Think about it, Tara. 
your ult isn't as strong as, as, it, as it has been. So now she's doing stuff and I don't really know what's going on, but unfortunately, as the cannon minion is still functional, uh, it's, it's sufficient to get the tower. So as you can see, we have a... The, the enemy has got a better, better score in terms of the kills that they inflicted. They've got way more towers than we do. We've got four towers left and the enemy is sitting on a luxury nine towers. So they played the tower game a lot better. And I think that basically comes from picking a lot of team fights, not focusing on towers at all. And I think we turned the whole we are fighting as a group thing a little bit too early. But and here comes the problem. We took it and and started to fight it early, but the enemy team was better doing it. So I've got Tome of the Reaper now, so I want to focus on Frostguard to get more armor against Stannis and stuff like that. I know, yeah, he's got true damage, but Tara is also a problem for me. Uh, Rioma is a problem for me. Basically, everything is a problem for me because it, I don't have any armor at all. Like, I'm some psycho clown jumping around, um, talking about Venice section, things like that. So I don't really invest anything in armor. Should be, should be something that may just should think about before entering a game so next tower and as you can see we are down to three towers and the enemies got double the kills than we do so here we go the game is not over yet i mean yes they've got super minions right now but there still is a chance that we might be able to win the game so we should always try to focus and always try to concentrate to do our very best that's a life lesson, kids. Um, you can always turn things around if you just focus hard enough on that. Um, eventually, in this case as well. So here we go. We've got some got some gold stuff here. I mean, the good thing is Rioma is actually down to mm, half HP or something, and that hurt. That hurt, but because the enemy got us in our base, of course, they now can basically pick all the objectives that they want to have. And that's really, really bad. So I was just flickering behind him just in order to get him killed, and he is dead. Bye-bye. So now I've got five kills. Um, so that's, that's more than half of the kills that my team has scored at all, which should tell you something, because... I don't know what, how you felt about my performance, but I didn't feel that I did great. Um, I think it's a solid and decent match that I fought here. Uh, there has been one flaw when I was running into the enemy forces completely head over heels. And that's about it. Um, so not much that I could do against this because my problem is I do have, I do have the damage. But the damage comes over time. That's the first problem. And the second problem is I don't really have the range. So I'm standing pretty, pretty, pretty close to the enemies. And my power is not enough to wipe them out in one single go. So I am dependent on throwing around stuff here and there and there and there. And then after I build up some stacks, I'm going to ult. And that will kill the squishies, of course. But the problem is... It's not about the squishies, it's about the Taras and the Xanases jumping in from the flanks and dealing tremendous amounts of damage that I can't do anything against. As you can see, here we go. And I mean, yes, I'm doing stuff and I'm pressing things here and I'm inflicting things and he's still alive. He's got five stacks, but he's still alive. Tara is basically one-shottable by, by Zenith, and look at that score. He's got 11 kills right now, and I'm sitting on a 7-3, which is... Uh, basically 75% of the stuff that we have. I mean, yeah, it's it's 70%. So, yes, there we go. But it's three-fourths of all the kills that my team inflicted is on my account, which is insane, considering that we had strong heroes such as Valheim and Tara and Gildur. I mean, Murad isn't the best jungler, that's, that's for sure. But the, all the other choices are decent. Valheim can be pretty pretty amazing if you know what you're doing and you've got a good positioning. 
So as we had a Valheim in both teams, I would just say that the enemy team play and the composition was just a little bit better. And I think we've, we we already threw the game here. No one thought about winning it anymore. Uh, here we go. Someone was defeated. I can't do anything because my team has already backed off. I mean, my team is not really existent anymore. There's just Gildur and that's about it. So yeah, guys, why did I show you this game? Like, why did I bring it with me? It's a defeat, obviously, because now they will just make a collapse. It's, it's just it's just a, a tiny note. You can always try your very best, but if your team is not willing to kind of focus on winning the game and your tactics and your team plan is shit, you will always lose, but take it as a champion. You can't win them all. That's that's the idea behind it. The game was still fun. I had a good time because I did good. Um, as you can see, I'm MVP overall with 32.6% uh, of the damage. I've got the most points in participation with our Murat down there. So I'm fine with my, with my performance. And that's about it. I hope you guys were entertained. And I hope that we are going to see each other soon when I'm releasing an Aram video. See ya. And a nice evening, of course.